Hello and welcome to this generation's episode of Exposures and Fire. I kind of cleaned up the lab for this episode. Not really, to be honest. But you wouldn't clean up either. Let's... On this episode we're going to be looking at high oxidation state chromium species. This here is potassium dichromate. It's hexavalent chromium and it's pretty recognisable. Very vibrant orange crystals. And its main application, apart from giving people cancer, is as a very powerful oxidizer. Hexavalent chromium is a very powerful oxidizer in the sense that it very readily wants to reduce back down to chromium-3. So we'll very easily strip an electron off or a few electrons off a substrate. You can see this quite readily with chromium trioxide. Chromium trioxide is made in very, very low pH solutions of a dichromate. Here I have a saturated solution of potassium dichromate and I'm adding concentrated sulfuric acid. <laughs> oh, fuck me sideways. Which acts to really lower the pH but also suck all the water out. And left with this um, thick red paste which is a horrible, horrible substance. It's very carcinogenic, very corrosive and very hygroscopic. Well we did have one drop that escaped and that ended up over there. But apart from that I think we we got out of that pretty much unscathed, which is very surprising. So, you know, everything is okay. So it's quite hard to dry. In fact, the only way to really dry it is to wash it with azeotropic nitric acid, which, you know, makes it an even worse compound to handle because it just gives off nitric acid vapors. I need that shit vacuum cleaner. Where are you? Where are you at? Oh, you're trying to hide. Oh, time to get fucked over, mate. Ugh. Well, I forgot how loud this thing was, seriously. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But once we have the dry material, we can see that it sets various alcohols on fire on contact. So you can see how readily the chromium-6 wants to go back to chromium-3. I mean, you can see all that chromium, green chromium-3, lying around after the reaction. You might think that then, because they're powerful oxidizers in sort of an aqueous sense, that it could translate to a pyrotechnic sense, but it doesn't really work like that. And even though they're sort of somewhat available, no one ever really uses them in pyrotechnic mixes. That being said, we are actually going to make a high oxidation state chromium species that is mildly explosive. It's called potassium tetraproxychromate. It actually has chromium in the plus 5 oxidation state. To make it, we have to have a really basic solution of chromate. So you can just start with dichromate, add a little bit of extra base to convert it down to chromate, um, and then slowly add in some concentrated peroxide um, and, and keep it really cool. Um, and you'll precipitate out these dark, sort of nearly black, red sort of crystals. They're, they're, like, I think they're red, but they're so kind of dark that they look black. Then filter, wash with a little ice cold water, and dry thoroughly on the pump. It's got some really nice chemistry in itself because while it's this brown, if you add it to an acid solution, it turns into a chromium-6 complex cold chromium oxide peroxide which is this really really nice blue which is an odd color for chromium to do and this chromium oxide peroxide is very unstable so in water it will break down to chromium 3 which is green so you have this really nice color change from a brown to a bright blue down to a green um, all within you know a couple seconds all right but let's get to the key question does it actually explode well we can see it is quite unstable to heat and what's cool about it is that when it blows up, it actually releases chromium-6. I say cool in a very mild sense because uh, <laughs> while it looks good, you are actually making finely dispersed clouds of a powerful carcinogen. So you know, like pros and cons, colours cancer. Because when it explodes it releases chromium-6, it is actually quite interesting to use this in a flash powder rather than dichromates by itself because you're making chromate chromium-6, so you're releasing energy but then you can go on and do the flash powder reaction. Well that's a theory anyway. Its reaction with aluminium was quite disappointing from what I saw. Maybe I'm just not doing it right, you know. Also, it's reported to have a very, very violent reaction with red phosphorus. I don't have and I don't really want to get any good red phosphorus because of the law and shit and getting arrested, but 
I do have some shitty red phosphorus on matchboxes, so I thought I'd give that a shot. <laughs> and, and even though it, the red phosphorus is really, really shit quality, you can still see this, this really quite a violent reaction. So you can imagine that with proper red phosphorus, it would be quite violent. You can find the explosive does much better. All right, that's a lie. That's not actually the peroxychromate. That's some silver satellite. It's good just to compare it to, right? This is what the actual peroxychromate looks like. You know, it's it's cool, but it's not exactly earth shattering. It is actually quite sensitive to shock, which just shows you how unstable the chromium fiber complex actually is. I found it hard to also sort of scale up to bigger tests because it just seemed to want to burst into flames. So that was by fuse and by sort of heat shock and also electrical. It really wouldn't have much power behind it anyway. It doesn't have that much power because it's just not generating that much gas and it, you know it's just it's just because the actual chromium 5 species is unstable while it's explosive it's not actually really going to a stable sort of endpoint you really need to make a good explosive you need to have something unstable and then go to something really stable because it has some low solubility in water i thought i could actually do a double displacement with silver and produce silver tetraperoxychromate uh, and I got some solid out and I was very excited, but it, it looks like it's just silver dichromate because it has no energetic properties. And when you add it to an acidified solution, you just get a yellow solution. You don't get any chromium oxide peroxide, which is very easy to see in low concentrations because it's quite blue. All right, this is kind of the end of the video. I like to end the video on sort of a big explosion or, you know, the culmination of all my work into one reaction, but I don't really have one for this video. So um, you should still like and subscribe because